Hi everyone, me Robert here, and in this video, I'll show you how we build our SAP Fiori Launch Pit Builder for Visual Studio Code. In order to give you a live demo of this tool, we will first create a simple sample app with the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model. Then we will use the Fiori Launch Pit Builder to create the launch pad. You will see three ways to use this tool. Through the Visual Studio Code command palette, by right-clicking on your app folder, and with the command line. Then I will show you the class model of our Fiori Launchpad Builder and also the implementation in TypeScript. If you like this stuff, please don't forget to click the like button, the subscribe button and also the notification bell below. So you know what? Let's get to it! All right. Let's do a live demo of the Launchpad Builder. In order to be able to demonstrate it to you, I will first create a simple app with CAP, which is the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model. We do this by running CDS init followed by an app name. I name this app Sample App and then I hit Enter. This creates a sample app directory. This contains an empty app directory for our Fiori apps an empty DB directory for the database model and an empty SRV directory for the services. I copy a simple database scheme to the database directory. This contains two entities, customers and products. And then I copy three services to the SRV directory. An admin service, a customer service, and the product service. And now I can run this app with CDS Watch sample app. This app is now running on port 4004 on localhost and I can run it by clicking on open in a browser. This opens a browser window where we can see the service endpoints for our services, products and customers. However, there are no web applications here yet. We switch back to Visual Studio Code and here we click View Command Palette and here we choose Fiori Open Application Generator. This opens a template wizard where we can choose SAP Fiori Elements as application type and work list as the floor plan. Then we hit next. As a data source, we choose use a local cap project. As project folder, we choose our sample app. And as O data service, we choose our customer service. Then we hit next again. Here we choose customers as the main entity and leave the default settings. Then we hit next again. As module name we set customers and as application title we set display customers. We scroll down to add Fiori Launchpad configuration and switch from no to yes. This will create a cross reference in our manifest.json file of this Fiori app. This isn't necessarily required for our Fiori Launchpad Builder since our tool can create a generic Launchpad even without this information. However, we set this to yes and click next. Here we enter a semantic object, customers, and we set the action to display the title to display customers. Then we hit finish. Once the files have been generated, we switch back to a browser. Here we now can see that a web application for our customer's endpoint has been created. We switch back to Visual Studio Code and here, here we can see that a customer's directory has been created within the app directory of our sample app. Within this customer's directory, there exists a web app directory, which contains several directories and files, including the manifest.json file. We scroll down and we can see that this uh, JSON file, this manifest.json file, has been created with a key value pair for the cross navigation. This contains an inbounds object, 
with a key value pair for each intent. In this intent, we can find the semantic object and also some other fields which we need to display in the tiles of the launchpad. Our Fiori launchpad builder does not necessarily need this information since it is cap capable to create this information on the fly. Now let's quickly create two more Fiori apps for our demo application, one for the products and one for the administration. Again, we run view command palette and we open the application generator again. We do the same as before, but this time we choose the product service as OData service. And we choose products as the main entity. We set the module name to products and the application title to display products. We add a Fiori Launchpad configuration and click next. We set the semantic object to products, the action to display and the title to display products, and then we click finish. Once the files have been generated, we switch back to the browser window again. And here we now can see that another web application for our product service is available here. The next Fiori app that we will create for our sample application is an admin app. We choose again a work list here and click next. We will create an admin service for the product and therefore we choose product service as OData service here. The main entity is products. This time we set the module name to admin products. Please note that we start the module name with admin since this is a criteria whether or not we shall display the corresponding tile in the admin group or not. Again, we add an FLP configuration and click next. Here we set the semantic object to admin project products, the action to manage and the title to manage products and we click finish. We switch back to a browser window and here we can see that the web application for our admin products has been generated as well. We can also double check this by verifying that uh, for each web application a directory has been created here in our app directory in our sample application. However, one important thing is missing. As you can see, there is no launchpad here available for our web applications. And that's where our software, the SAP Fiori Launchpad Builder for Visual Studio Code comes into play. In order to create this launchpad, we switch back to Visual Studio Code. The SAP Fiori Launchpad Builder provides us three ways to create the launchpad. The first way to create a Fiori launchpad is by right-clicking on a directory within our sample application. This opens a context menu where we can choose Fiori Create Launchpad. The Fiori Launchpad Builder provides us with several messages where we can see that the Launchpad files have been created successfully on the file system. Now we can switch back to the browser window and in the web applications we can now see that the Launchpad has been created. We click on this launchpad.html link in order to open our Launchpad. Now our new Launchpad appears with tiles for display customers, display products and manage products. The manage products app has been added to the administration group and can be seen on the administration tab as well. The second way to create the launchpad is through the Visual Studio command palette. Here we choose the path to our sample app and we click OK. Again, the launchpad has been created successfully. We quickly verify this by reloading the browser window. The third way to create the launchpad is through the command line. In a terminal window, we can type FLB, which stands for Fiori Launchpad Builder, dash dash help. This gives us an overview of the command line options of this tool. However, running this tool is as simple as typing FLB 
and providing a search tier. So let's clear the window first. Now let's type FLB and our sample app and hit enter. And again, we can see the success messages here. And again, we switch back to the browser window and we reload the launchpad. Before we look into the details on how we built the Fiori Launchpad Builder, please give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. And here you can see our class model diagram of our SAP Fiori Launchpad Builder for Visual Studio Code. Basically, the whole program is controlled by the Launchpad Builder class here on the left side. It utilizes these three classes here in the top of the, of the diagram, the project class, the app class and the manifest class for gathering the data and it utilizes the classes here in the bottom of the diagram, the launchpad, intent, intent value, tile and the group class for creating the launchpad. I will walk you through the source code of these classes in the next few minutes. Before we look into the source code of our Fiori Launchpad Builder, let's have a look into the cap samples from SAP and here we find in the Fiori directory the Fiori sandbox config.json file. This JSON file basically shows us the structure which is required to display tiles and groups in a launchpad. We can see that this JSON file has a groups array and within this groups array it has a tiles array. If we scroll further down we can also see that it has an inbounds object which contains further objects for each intent. So basically this gives us the structure we need to create with our Fiori Launchpad Builder. Therefore, we have created a very basic JSON file here in the templates directory of our Fiori Launchpad Builder. This will be used from our source code later on. We provide the source code of the Fiori Launchpad Builder with the latest version of our SAP PTP development container, but you also can get it as a separate module. In either way, you find the source code in the source directory. And here you find several files written in TypeScript. And each of these files contains a class. The app is controlled from the Launchpad Builder class which imports several other classes which are in this sources directory here as well. The search directory where you are trying to create the launchpad is passed to the constructor of this class. The constructor passes the search string to a new project object. We can open the source code for this project class here on the left side as well. This class in turn determines where your Fiori apps are located and stores it in the apps directory, apps tier property of the project class. It also determines the root tier of your application and it has a method get apps which determines all uh, Fiori apps of your application. It does this by finding all manifesto JSON files in your uh, apps tier where your Fiori apps are located. And for each found manifest, it creates a new app object and pushes it to the apps property of this class. Let's go back to launch builder class. Here, if the project has determined valid uh, directories, we retrieve all the apps from the project object. And here we start actually building the launchpad. This calls the private build launchpad method, which creates a new launchpad object. Again, you can find the launchpad class here on the left side. We click on it. But before we look into this launchpad class as well, we switch back to the launchpad builders class again. And here you can see that we iterate through all the apps of the project. And within this loop, we iterate through all the intents of the manifest of the current app. Here you can see that we have two more classes, the app class and the manifest class. 
we can open both classes by clicking on the corresponding file on the left side. Here we find the app TypeScript file and we also find the manifest TypeScript file here. But we don't look into the details of these two classes. Instead, we switch back to the Launchpad Builder class. And here you can see that we get the intent key and the intent value of each intent. And here we sanitize the intent value if it's not uh, fully available in the app's manifest. And here we create a new intent object by passing in a unique intent key and an intent value to the constructor of this intent class. Again, you can find the file for this intent class here on the left side. But we don't look into this. We switch back to the Launchpad Builder class again. And here you can see that we add this previously created intent object to the Launchpad object. The same we do with the tile object, which we create here and which we also add to the Launchpad object here. Again, the implementation of the tile class can be found here on the left side in the tile.ts TypeScript file. But again, we don't look into these details and we switch back to the Launchpad Builder class. Once we iterated through all the apps and its intents and added the tiles to the Launchpad, we finally call the persist method from the Launchpad class. This creates and persists the Launchpad configuration file and the Launchpad HTML page to the local file system. Of course, there is a lot more we could look into, but for now, let's just look into the Launchpad class and its methods add intent, add tile, and persist. We open the Launchpad class and here we can find several properties including the groups, the intents which are stored in an inbounds object, the configuration directories where we store the configuration file and the Launchpad HTML file. In the constructor of this class, we read the configuration template file and also the page template file from the file system and store them in the properties of this class. And we also set the corresponding output files here. In this method, we create the groups of our launchpad. And here we add the tile to its corresponding group depending if it belongs to an admin app or not. And finally, the persist method creates the config file and also the HTML page file. If you like this content, please click the like button, the subscribe button, and also the notification bell below. Thank you for watching.